Good morning, Year 2. Welcome to our next writing lesson. Before we start, let's imitate our story. I want you to be loud, speak clearly and join in with the actions as much as you can. Let's go. Storm Unicorns. The Storm Unicorn is a type of unicorn that is very rare. Physical Appearance. A Storm Unicorn has the body of a horse and a long horn. Full stop. The horn usually has a spiral shape and sticks out from the middle of the head. Full stop. Most are a beautiful ebony colour with flashes of gold and silver that look like lightning. Full stop. As a storm unicorn moves, it sends out showers of tiny electric splinters. Full stop. Habitats. Like the common unicorn, the storm unicorn lives in forests. Full stop. They are very shy and therefore not often seen. Full stop. During the daytime, they sleep under bushes or curled up amongst ferns. Full stop. At night, the storm unicorn emerges and if you're lucky, can be seen in the moonlit pools. Full stop. Diet. Storm unicorns have a fairly limited diet. Full stop. In the main, they live on leaves, grass and other forms of vegetation. Full stop. However, they can be tempted with apples and some have even been found to eat sugar lumps. Mm. Full stop. If you find a storm unicorn, you must never, ever feed it potatoes as they are allergic to them and it will make them seriously ill. Full stop. Fun facts. The last known sighting of a storm unicorn was in 1673 by a man called Dr. Daffer, who claimed that he saw one whilst walking in the woods, but he could not prove it. Full stop. The most amazing thing about storm unicorns is that if you meet one, it can bring you great luck. Full stop. For this reason, many people hope to catch a glimpse of the most beautiful, fiery creature. Full stop. Okay, so today is Tuesday and we are learning to use the power of three. So we're going to understand what the power of three is and then we're going to use the power of three in writing. Now we have looked at this before, so you might well remember. Let's look at our star words. The first one is comma. List. Effective. Now, when something's effective, that means it stands out and it's really exciting when somebody reads it. It is effective. So when we list things in threes, it sounds more effective. Here's an example. During the day, most storm unicorns live in shady, cool and dry caves. So the first thing we have is shady, then it's cool and dry. We have listed three adjectives to describe the caves, which is much more effective than just saying shady caves. It makes it really stand out to the reader. OK, let's think about what the difference is here. Here's my first example and then here's my second. Let's start with the first. 
A rainbow unicorn has the body of a horse, full stop. They have long horns and they have flowing tails, full stop. OK, let's see what these two sentences are telling me. A rainbow unicorn has the body of a horse. That's one point. They have long horns and they have flowing tails. This information is really good to know as the reader. Let's see the second example. A rainbow unicorn has the body of a horse, a long horn and a flowing tail. Full stop. Just one sentence this time. And let's see if it tells me the same information. A rainbow unicorn has the body of a horse, a long horn and a flowing tail. When someone has done this example and written it as the power of three in one sentence, it's more effective than if it were in two sentences and broken up. Let's look at another one and think about which is more effective. Here's our first example. When people look for rainbow unicorns, they leave sparkling hoof prints. Just seen as a spelling mistake there. Ooh. Rainbow unicorns. So they leave sparkling hoof prints. Let's look at the second example. When people look for rainbow unicorns, they only find muddy, small and sparkling hoof prints. I'm still learning about hoof prints, but I've got three different pieces of information. In the first example, it just tells me if that they're going to be sparkling. But in this example, it says they're going to be muddy, small and sparkling. Remember, when we're listing in threes, we will have a comma between the first two and an and between the second and third one. Because when we're listing something and it comes to the last item in our list, we'll always put and before it. So I want you to pause and think. Rainbow unicorns are very rare and special. So why is it important to write about it then using the power of three? They are very rare and they are very special. So why do we want to use the power of three when we write about them? Why is that important? I've given you three different options here. So is it to add more information? Is it to make it stand out to the reader? Or is it to make it a longer sentence? I want you to pause the video now and have a think. And when you're ready, press play. OK. The answer is, is that when we write it in using the power of, write about rainbow unicorns using the power of three, it makes it stand out more to the reader. It might well add more information, but you could have that same amount of information in different sentences. But when we use the power of three, it might not even make a longer sentence, but it makes it a more effective sentence and it makes it stand out to the reader. So. Let's have a think when we're going to be writing our um, writing about an, a physical appearance of the rainbow unicorn, we're going to be describing the body and then we're going to be describing a special feature about it. But what kind of descriptions of the body could we say when we're describing the rainbow unicorn? We could say again they have the body of a horse. We could say they have stormy grey eyes or deep blue eyes or charcoal black eyes. We could say they have golden hooves and a spiralled horn. There are many different features that we could describe about the rainbow unicorn. Remember, these are just examples of what they look like. And in your fact file, you can decide what a rainbow unicorn looks like. The second thing we want to write about is describing the special features. What sets them apart? What makes them amazing compared to other unicorns? It could be the colour. Maybe they're multicolored. Maybe they have patterns all over their body. Maybe they have fiery tails and manes or like this rainbow unicorn. Maybe they have a fiery fur as well. Maybe they have a magical sparkling rainbow mane or maybe they have um, these patterns just like this along its back. In our writing today, we're going to have our subheading about what a rainbow unicorn looks like. Then we're going to step, do step one of describing the body and step um, step three of um, describing the special features. So that's step two and this is step three, describing the special features. And we're going to be using the power of three today to make our points and descriptions really effective. Let's go. 
Okay, so I'm going to begin by writing my subtitle. Remember, in our non-chronological reports, um, each different section has a subtitle. Now, this is describing the physical appearance, so I'm actually going to change my subtitle to a question. What does the rainbow unicorn look like? So, here I go. Capital letter at the beginning. What's being really careful with my handwriting? I'm talking about my rainbow unicorns. Oh, unicorn on look like look like like question mark it's a question and i'm going to answer that so i'm going to underline it because subheadings are underlined just like oops the title I'm using a ruler to do that as well, to make sure it's really careful. Now I can write about my first point, and that is to describe the body. This is where I'm going to use my power of three. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about the body being the body of a horse. I think that's a very important thing. So I'm going to just make some notes here. I'm going to say the body. The second thing I want to write about is the horn. I'm going to describe the horn, and then I'm going to talk about their eyes. Okay, you want to describe, maybe choose which three things before you write your sentence you're going to write about. So, I'm going to begin my sentence saying, rainbow unicorns have, and then I'll go and describe each one. So, capital letter, rainbow, b o unicorns, unicorns have, the first thing in my list is the body of a horse. Remember, after I've written that, I want to have a comma to separate it from the second one. So, have the body, leaving a line of a horse, comma. Now, the next thing I want to write about is a horn. I'm gonna say that they have a long spiraled horn and I want to add some detail that it protects them from predators. So I'm going to say a long spiraled horn that protects them from predators. And then I can move on to my third feature. Um, so a long comma, because these are two adjectives to say, so I'm going to separate them with a comma. A long spiraled, spiraled horn that protects them from predators. Predators are people who would come and hunt them down. That, being really careful with my letters, that they're tall and they're reaching up there, um, or dropping down from predators. And then the last thing is that to describe their eyes. Now remember, when I'm joining the last thing in my list, I use and to join that together. So I'm going to say and, and again, I might want to describe the eyes. So I'm going to say that they have deep blue eyes, but I want to add some more detail and say, and deep blue eyes, that can sometimes appear black. And that's where I'll finish my sentence. So I want to say, and deep blue eyes, that can sometimes appear black really important to say your um, sentence before you write it. It really helps us get the words right in our mind. Deep blue eyes that can sometimes appear, two p's and appear if you want to write about that as well, black. Full stop. So let me double check, I've listed it properly in my group of three. So I should have a comma between the first two and then an and in the second one. Rainbow unicorns have the body of a horse, comma. Good, I'm gonna circle it. I wouldn't like you to circle yours, but I'm gonna circle mine so that you can see it clearly. A long comma spiral, now I use that comma there to separate my two adjectives. A long spiraled horn that protects them from predators and Deep blue eyes that can sometimes appear black. Full stop. Fantastic. Now I can write about my second thing and describe the special feature. 
Now for this, I want to say that most rainbow unicorns are a light purple colour, but they have a hundred coloured spots all over their body. I wonder what your special feature will be. I don't need to use the power of three because I've just made my first point very effective and now I want to add some more detail by describing the special feature. So most rainbow unicorns are a light purple colour with hundreds of coloured spots that cover their whole body. That's my sentence. Most, capital letter, rainbow, remember who I'm writing, not about storm unicorns anymore, but about rainbow unicorns. And I'm saying a light are uh, a light purple instead of just saying purple, so that's adding more description. Are uh, a light purple colour with hundreds. I'm going to write the word for hundreds of. Now I'm going to move on to my next page. Hundreds of coloured spots that cover their whole body. Hundreds of coloured... I wonder what kind of patterns your rainbow unicorns will have that cover... Thinking about their homophones now, there is the one where they own it, they possess it. So we've got that little man for their whole body, full stop, fantastic. Now it's your turn, off you go year two, enjoy!